Welcome to the Empower Series Online. My name is Clifton Johnson. I'm the founder and executive director of the Empower Series Incorporated. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization that's brought to you by the generous donations of Comerica Bank, AE Media Group, and you. So thank you very much. You can go to our website, www.empowerseries.com, find out more information about us, or check us out on all of our social media accounts. You're on YouTube now, so please subscribe if you haven't. Like us, share us, add comments. Don't keep us a secret. Our topic today is gonna to be on goal setting and visioning. We have a guest that's been on the Empower Series before. She has been a two-time speaker in 2016. She is a mastery mentor, and she's gonna share with us her coaching mechanism to help us really get very clear on our vision and how to be successful achieving our goals, no matter what they are. So I cannot wait to share her with the Empower Series community. And without any further ado, Suzanne Hart, welcome to the Empower Series. I am excited to be here. And, I, and I'm really, really excited for this topic. This is one of my favorite ways to end the year and get ready for a brand new year. So um, I'm thrilled to be part of this process with you. Well, I am, I don't know who is more thrilled because this is long overdue, Suzanne. I told everybody that you've been a Power Series speaker before uh, since 2016 and people are probably going like, uh, wait, this is 2000, what's taking you so long to bring her back, right? <laughs> I, you, you know, I, I believe everything is timing. Yes. And, yes. and we are, I guess we're right on time. We're right on time. We're doing exactly what we are, we're called to do. And, and you know, I just really want to say I absolutely love the work that the Empower Series is doing. And I think it is, you know, when you bring great content to people and we feed our mind, it is really, it, it activates possibility, right? And, and you've been doing that for so many years. So first, congratulations and thank you. Well, thank you for giving me grace on that. And I just cannot wait to really dig deep and go deep into the topic that we're talking about. As you know, we cover many different topics throughout the year. We start in January with visioning and goal setting. And then throughout that, we deal with every other topic that we can think of to help really empower people, whether that's getting prepared for school and how do you find money for that, getting your credit straight, financial literacy, purchasing a home, uh, starting a business, life insurance, estate planning. So every month we talk about a different topic, but then in November at this time during Thanksgiving and the holidays, we wanna just sit back and say, how do we put this all together? How do we just take a step back, look at what we've accomplished, what we've gone through for the year, and how do we wrap it all together and really move forward towards our goal? So you talking about this during this time, I think is just so ideal and perfect. And I just cannot wait to hear what you got to say to help us put some perspective to 2020, which is a year of, I don't know what kind of adjective I want to use to describe it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it it's been it's been an interesting year. Um, you I like that word, interesting, because that can yeah. that can go different ways, couldn't it? Yeah, it, it's it's been an interesting year. I think it's been a year full of lessons. It's been a year full of learns. It's been a year full of highs and lows. Um, but I think it's also been a year for many of us of, of growth and growth maybe in ways we haven't expected, but growth nonetheless. And I, and I think, you know, what we're about to do is really start by reflecting back over the, the months that have seemed to have flown by in order to prepare for the future. And, you know, they say our past informs our, our future. And, and what I wanna start with is letting everybody, not only does our past inform our future, but it's what we do in present day, day in, day out, that actually creates our future. So today we're gonna to look at the past and, and we're gonna plan for the future, but then we're gonna really uh, create a game plan for how do you powerfully live in the moment, in the now, with each day being a stepping stone to the vision you have for your life. Okay, well, I'm excited about that. So this is gonna be a program that people can look at over and over again. Yeah. And uh, you are a, a coach, right, by profession? Yeah, I do, I do mindset mastery. So I, I'm, I'm called the mindset mastery mentor. And for me, you know, why I love mindset mastery is Mastery of self is the, is the beginning of personal leadership. 
And, and, you know, oftentimes when people talk about leadership, we look outside of ourselves and we act like it's something we do to other people, right? I'm going to, I lead a group of people. The reality is in order for leadership to actually occur, it all lives in my ability to master self, my ability to have an awareness of my thoughts, my ability to manage emotions as they come up in my, in my life, my ability to to be present to my personal dialogue, but also what I speak into the world and how that combination actually creates the behaviors and habits and actions I take day in, day out. And I say that, you know, when you master your mindset, you position yourself to be unstoppable. So how many people listening would love to have just an unstoppable, powerful year that you planned before it ever started? So, and this, I think this is a great topic for us to talk about as well, because this is going to lead us into our session in January that's going to be really more on visioning and goal setting. So taking us through a process of kind of reflecting, looking back at our accomplishment, our successes, and really putting us in the right frame set and mindset that is mm-hmm. to really look at, okay, where are we now yeah. before we yeah. talk about moving forward. So in the, in the description section, of our YouTube channel, you'll see links to how to get in touch with Suzanne, um, the stuff we're gonna talk about. There's even a link to download a, an audio of a visioning exercise that Suzanne really suggests that you go through before you start doing the actual exercises that we're gonna talk about today. Yeah. But, um, but definitely got us through it, Suzanne. This is gonna be your virtual coaching session. <laughs> Thank you, Clifton. So I want to start by uh, doing this process of celebration and gratitude. And and why that is so key is, is oftentimes we want to charge into the next year. We want to charge into 2021 or whatever year it's going to, it's going to be if you're listening to this as, as a replay. But really what you want to look at is where am I where am I completing the year? And to celebrate the things that happen. So the first thing I'm gonna ask everybody to do is really take a moment and write down in celebration the goals you achieved. And the goals or the targets that you hit are the things that you planned. Um, and it might be an income goal. It might be um, something you did in your business or your career that you achieved. Uh, it could be a, a goal you achieved with a, with family. Whatever it is, just begin to take a moment and just write down the you know the the goals, the targets that you hit that you're excited about, and celebrate them. The second thing I'm going to ask you to do is to also celebrate your successes. Now, people might be going, "What's the difference between a, hitting a, a target or a goal and and a success?" So I want to I want to make a distinction. A goal is, a, you know, a target or a goal, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll clear that up in a moment. A target is something that we aim at, and it's usually very specific and measurable. And we, and we either hit that target or not, right? So in, in business, many people have income goals, they have sales goals, and, you, and it's, it usually has a number and you hit it or not. A success, however, is a little bit different. And I think success gives us life in the process, in the journey. A success is the things that you've learned along the way. A success can be, who did I become? How did I grow? A success could be, um, what did I have to overcome that surprised me? So the successes that you, that you want to look at are the things that happened along the journey that maybe wowed you, that you didn't expect that grew you, that had you learn something. It might have been an experience that you just reveled in. You know, and the reason this is so key is because there's two ways to get where you're going. There's times when we can do something and and hit our target and feel unfulfilled because of how we took the journey. And then there's other times where it could be, it could have been hard work to hit that target, but you arrive fulfilled and excited because along the journey, you became more than you knew you could be. You grew, you expanded, you learned, you, you, um, you expressed yourself in ways that you didn't know. You rose to a challenge that you didn't expect. And particularly in this year that we've lived, we said it was an interesting year, right? Yeah. 
I imagine people can probably look back and go, my goodness, I was challenged in so many ways. And look at how I overcame. Look at how I grew. Look at how I was able to pivot. Look at how I was able to find faith and keep moving. You, we, there's all these different things. So I want everyone to take a moment and just celebrate who you were and the successes you experienced as you went through the year. Once you've done that, the next thing I want you to look at is, is what did you learn, right? Because, you know, we have those moments where you're like, I learned this. What skills did you develop, right? So what learns happened over the year? And then the other thing I want you to, to ask yourself is where were you challenged? Because our challenges are areas where we can, we can learn and do something different as we move into the new year. So where were you challenged? And you know, some people say, what are my weaknesses? I like to ask you, where are you challenged? And, mm -hmm. and where would you like to, to make your best better, right? The best that you were today, where would you like to make it better? And what we're actually doing is we're really just taking an inventory of the year. I also want you to, to write down what you're grateful for, who you're right. grateful for, right? So to totally sit in gratitude for people, for events, for things that might have happened that you're just like, I am so grateful right? Um, you know, I'm this year, I'm grateful for being able to shift and move my business in a direction that I was thinking of and hesitant to do, but circumstances kind of forced it to happen. I'm in total gratitude for that. I'm sitting in gratitude for collaborations that were so pivotal in, in, in not only my growth this year, but just the energy and excitement I came to my business with because of those collaborations. I'm, I'm in gratitude for just, you know, expanding my faith over, over the time as we went through this journey, as I had to lean in and, and trust and surrender to a process I didn't plan for, right? Call 2020. So yeah. what, what, what are you grateful for? So, so I want everyone to take a moment and, um, and just, you know, write, write for yourself. And what you're actually doing is you're, you're in a place of reflection right now. And why this reflection is so key, Clifton, is because you want to you wanna really know where, where, you're, where you're beginning or ending the year so you can begin um, in a powerful way. And, you know, anyone who works with me, I say you want to examine the data, right? Yeah. You don't want to start a new plan without examining the data that is always available from what you've done. And, and when I talk about examining the data, what's beautiful about it, when you live in this space where you're examining the data, there's actually no such thing as, as failure. There, is, there are learns and there's opportunities to grow. And then there's, there's those successes. So it really shifts what the, the perspective on the whole year as an opportunity for you to use all the information to move things forward. So that's the first thing we want to do. Well, Suzanne, let me, let me just stop you there because first I, I want to say when, when you're watching this video, you may want to watch through it just to kind of get the content, but definitely this is a video that you need to stop, pause it, and mm -hmm. then do the work and come back if you really want to get the full, full benefit of this. And I want to stop at this point because I, I would say 2020 is a tough year, but this could happen in any year. Mm -hmm. When you had, when we've, the pandemic, you know, we, we have people who have lost loved ones. Yeah. We have people who during that loss was not able to really connect with them during that period of time when they were sick. We have people who've lost jobs, um, mm -hmm. lost their businesses. Um, you know, some people were successfully able to pivot, uh, not everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so these things that you say to write down is, is always kind of hard to do sometimes because we tend to gravitate to the things that happen to us and what we've lost, but it's really hard. And sometimes you really do have to think about, okay, what have I gained or, or what is it that I can now do? But it's really tough to do if you've been like hit like a fire hose with water of just stuff that you've lost. How, how do you help somebody really get to um, look, get past the lost and the hurt to really find gratitude and 
you know, I, I think that I think there's two there's two pieces, right? Uh -huh. And um and and one of the things I always remind myself is I can't control or change what has occurred, right? So so oftentimes life comes at us and we don't plan for the things that come at us and they're and they're beyond our control. So you know, the loss of a, of a family member, the loss of a a business, a, a different losses that we experience, oftentimes they're beyond our control. But this, this is where, for me, you know, the 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 shift can happen. One is is to begin to one celebrate that you're still here, you're still here, you're still standing, and two is to look for the gift in those in those moments. And and you know, someone will say, oh, but there's no gift, and I will challenge you to say there's always a gift. Right. And, and, and sometimes the gift is, is the lesson you learn. Sometimes the gift is the strength that you didn't know you had. Right. Sometimes the gift is um, being able to celebrate someone and, 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 and move forward in honor of them. Because in no matter what situation that we are faced with, when we choose to look for the blessing in it, Sometimes it's it, us, as challenging as it is, there is one. And I think, you know, when I do mindset mastery, the place I have all my clients um, sit in is that, you know, I can, I can be a victim of my circumstance and it's very easy to do because it's some, certain, some situations you just feel like you're, you're, you're the victim. But when I and you choose to say, okay, this has occurred, but what can I, what can I take from this? Who can I be as a result of this? What can I do um, to move me forward? And you know, oftentimes when people um, experience loss, one of the things I talk about is, is, is living to celebrate another, to honor a, a person's life and taking a lesson that they had taught you or a gift that they gave you or something that they, they inspired in you and live, live that out in honor of them. So it really is around how we choose to hold our challenges and what, and what we choose to look for in it. And, um, and you know, I know for myself in my toughest moments, when I'm, when I'm willing to go, what's the gift here? What's the lesson? What's the opportunity? What am I supposed to learn? How am I supposed to grow? In the moment, it doesn't feel good. But once I, 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 I move past it and I actually choose to grow into something, when I look back in hindsight, I always go, if not for this, I wouldn't be here. If not for this, I would not have chosen this. If not for this, I would not have become that. And sometimes that becoming is, is my darkest places. And one of the things I, I will say um, before we move on, Clifton, is if oftentimes when we when we hit our hardest moments, our hardest moments tend to bring us to what I call the edge of ourselves. And what I mean by that is all our coping mechanisms, all the things that we know to do, it's kind of like we exhausted them. Uh -huh. Napoleon Hill says that if in that moment you you choose faith and you keep moving, it's almost like your higher self emerges a new part of you you find and you find that because until that moment that part of you didn't need to exist and that's where transformation happens is when we decide to look for the possibility look for the growth look for the opportunity that it's almost like we reach into ourselves and we find another place in ourselves a bigger bolder place and it's called forth because we're at the end of who we know ourselves to be and transformation happens. So I hope that serves. Well, I'll tell you this, you know, before we do move on, I do wanna share something personal. So most people know that I've lost my brother um, due to COVID-19. And I will tell you that this has just been a hard year for me. I, I came up with this term called, I'm functionally depressed. I'm not, I'm not at my best, but I am still getting by and waking up and doing things but I'm just not at the same level that I would like to be because I'm still struggling through this. However, as you talk about, you know, what can I take away from this? One of the, a few things that, is, that has happened that is really good is I, I now have a much closer relationship with my nephew and my niece, mm -hmm. you know, my brother's daughter and, and son. 
And I would hope to have that close relationship even if he was alive. But now that he's passed, that really I, I'm making a bigger effort. And that is one thing that's come out of this, that I, I have more of a deeper relationship with them that I believe is very positive. And I'm, I'm glad I'm having that this year. Mm -hmm. The other thing um, I thought about is, <clears throat> as I get kind of emotional about this, is there's, there are many people experiencing loss. And I can tell you that I, I haven't really gone through the grieving process, but I've been doing a lot of reading. And as I meet people who have experienced loss, I'm really able to relate with them at a different level. Absolutely. And, and I, I, I would tell you that my brother had a period of time where he was homeless and hooked on crack. And one of the benefits I saw out of that experience for him is his ability to connect with people at various levels of their life and really make a difference. And if he didn't go through that experience, he wouldn't be able to connect with them. So as I'm just talking through this now, I think me experiencing this loss has really helped me to connect with people at a different level than I was able to connect with people before who may have experienced loss, but I haven't experienced what I experienced. But, but this is a tough moment. This is just an example. And so I wanted to, to acknowledge that there are other people who are going through some hard times and your first step is easy intellectually to do, but it may take you pausing this video and taking some serious time to think through what are my successes and what have I really learned through this midst of a period of loss. And, and you know, Clifton, I, I love the fact that you're pausing us here because one of the reasons I ask people to look is because it is so easy to come to the end of the year and say, ah, oh, I didn't do, I failed. I didn't do well this year. Mm -hmm. And the reason I ask people to look and I ask for the successes and the different things is when we actually start to look and, and we start taking the inventory, we, we will see the things that we didn't see. Right, we will we will begin to acknowledge the things that seemed, you know, um, not a big deal. But this is the thing: every journey that we go on, success is not one big leap. You know, getting to hitting your target isn't one big leap. It's every small incremental step that sometimes we overlook that we think, oh, it wasn't important. You know, it could be as simple as. I got up every morning and I put my bold face on and I met, went out that door no matter how I was feeling. Yeah. If that's a, that's a success because there's people that didn't make it out, out of the door. So I think it's when, when we stop and we acknowledge who you and I chose to be in the face of the challenges. And then you begin to see your own brilliance and 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 you know because we tend to be hard on ourselves finding and seeing our brilliance for many of us it's pause stop look no matter how small it is acknowledge it and and it's when we acknowledge um those small things that we are able to move on to bigger things because it, it compounds and, 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 it, and it's also when you begin to acknowledge the small things that it begins to shift and begin to create the healing and the, the ability to see, see possibility for yourself because those small things add up. And I know most people, when they start doing this and they start making their list, they'll end up with a page even if they couldn't get started. So the next step is, is to really just celebrate the fact that you, 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 did, you did your list. And, and, and no matter how big or how small is that you took, a, you took some time to reflect. Now what I wanna do is I wanna do what, we, what I like to call vision casting. And I wanna have you cast a vision into the future. And how I tend to do this is I tend to do this with a visualization exercise. So as Clifton said, that in, in the, one of the links below, there'll be an audio of a visualization exercise. And basically what, I'm, what the exercise asked you to do is to imagine yourself five, 10 years in the future, you decide the date um, and you're sitting in your absolute favorite spot in your absolute favorite chair and you're looking out at your most favorite view. And, and it's gonna be kind of, where are you? And, I, and I'm gonna guide you through some questions that kind of take you into your future 
and have you be looking back at your life. And the reason we do, I do that, and, and I've done it with many of my clients, is oftentimes when people are told to, to write goals or do vision boards, the exercise is, well, let me just start writing some things, or let me just go cut out some, some you know, pictures out of books, stick them on a board, and here's my vision board. But there's a disconnection to it. So this is kind of what I, I want you to do is I want you to take yourself into the future and I want you to write your story and live your story and taste your story and smell your story and look at the colors in your story. Look at the weather in your story. Look at where you are. So it's really taking you into your future and having you sit a moment in a place that you created for yourself. You designed this, you designed your life. Right. And then once you've done that and you have this picture and you have the emotions attached to this picture, now you can go and say, OK, so this is five years in in the future. If I were to just plan and set some targets and goals this year, what would they need to be to move me a year forward? And now what you're doing is you're lining up the neck this year that we're going into with the vision that you casted for yourself, whether that's five years from now, whether that's 10 years from now. And what I, I, when I work on this, I tell, I tell everyone, and when you do it, your goals all line up leading to this one place called your vision. Now you and I are on purpose, right? Versus just, let me just write some goals. G give the goals energy and give it meaning. And this is why it's so key, Clifton, it's because no matter what we do, we all have painted something in our mind, right? I want you to take a moment and really get clear on what that picture looks like because what it pulls us into existence, what propels us is a why worthy of our lives. And a why worthy of our lives is, lives in the picture that you're gonna cast for yourself. It also lives in who you become and how you contribute in down the road. So what we're doing is we're, we're giving energy and life to whatever you're gonna to choose to do this year. And that's gonna become the pull. And what I say to people is once you've, once you've written it, cause once you do the exercise, I'm gonna ask you to sit back and just write down that story. Is to don't put it aside, is to pull it out on a regular basis, you know, I at least a few times a week, a week and sit down and read it to yourself and keep that, that energy and that vision and that picture that you cast it for yourself alive because that's what's gonna move you in the hard times. That's what's gonna move you when you're like, I am so tired, I don't have the energy to do this. I've lost hope, I, I'm discouraged. It's picking this back up and reconnecting to the place you were when you wrote it. Well, two things I want to talk about there. First, this whole process of creating this vision, another speaker talked about how vision is all about visibility, not feasibility. So we have to kind of disconnect the how. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It, because the how can get in the way of our vision. It, oh, well, I, I don't know how we're going to do that. So let me be realistic, quote unquote. So it's very important for you to not get sidetracked or discouraged because you don't know how to realize this vision. Just really believe in it. And, and mm -hmm. the second thing is, as you have this vision and you're looking at it, one of the things that an author said who wrote a book, um, The Science of Getting Rich, Wallace D. Waddle, he said, one of the most difficult things that we um, will be doing in our lives is really believing in this image or this vision we have for ourselves when our current circumstances is so disconnected Absolutely. from it. And, and that is so true because so many times we can just get discouraged and not believe in it. And we have to keep it in front of us, really believe and not be discouraged when our pr present circumstances is nowhere close to seeing the feasibility of us realizing our vision. And you know, Clifton, you, you, what, what's beautiful about what you're saying is part of the reason I have people do a visualization exercise, close your eyes and I move you down the road is because that's how they, they actually get disconnected from the how. 
And so if I were to say, oh, just write some goals, people, people are going to be in the present now and they're going to write from, uh, I don't like, how am I going to do this? But when we get into vision, we tend to daydream. Yeah. And it's in that daydreaming that we suspend reality for a moment. And whenever I do the exercise and I ask people, where did you go? People are like, I'm just surprised at where I went. I'm surprised at who was there, what I was doing, because what they've done is we've suspended reality for a moment, right? Mm -hmm. and, and people have actually just begun to dream. And, and, and the reality is when we are daydreaming, the, the, the truth is how is none of our business? We're not paying attention to how. We're just like, wow, let me just move into the future. And that's exactly what we, we're talking about. Okay, so let's get into our next step. And now what we're doing, you've got, so now you have, you've celebrated your year, you've cast a vision, and, and I'm trusting that you have a picture in your life of some place that's just inspiring you. One of the things I'd recommend you do is you is to write it down, but also to actually go and create a vision board. And you'll notice that when you start looking for pictures, now you're looking for things specific that line up with, what, with the vision that you casted for yourself. So now we're actually ready to do what most people will talk about as goal setting. So I might do goal setting a little bit different for everyone, because I'm, I'm gonna let you know now, we're gonna talk about a hundred goals. And whenever I say we're going to set a hundred goals, I watch people go, what? A hundred goals. And most people say, Suzanne, I can't even write 10 goals. How are you going to get me to write a hundred goals? Well, I'm going to give you a process that um, is really going to make this very, very simple. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set 10 targets and we're going to set 10 targets in, um, in 10 categories. And I want to talk to you about what a, what a target is. So in order to do that, I'm going to tell you a little story. So when I was young, my mother sent me to a camp. It was a ranch. And we did horseback riding, archery, and riflery. I loved archery. And so when I, when I got that bow, and, that bow and arrow, I was so excited. And uh, I watched the instructor do it. And I pulled back the, the bow and, and, and the arrow. And I watched the arrow basically land at my feet. And so nothing happened. And, and I kept doing it and nothing happened. And then I remember the instructor coming up to me and saying, Suzanne, um, you've got to be patient. And I was like, okay, patience. Now you tell a young child, you got to be patient, whatever. And so, and so I was like, oh wait, patience, patience. But then he told me I had to practice. And, and he showed me the technique that I needed to use. So I would come to the range and I would practice and I would aim my, my, my arrow at the target in front of me and my arrow started to fly. And then he said, he said to me, and again, of course, again, I got, I lost my patience. And he said, Suzanne, it's going to take a bit of time. And all you've got to do is come to the range and, and just continue to practice. And then it'll become a part of you. And I remember going to the range while I was at camp every day. And suddenly I was hitting my target. And finally I would get to the range and I would actually hit a bullseye almost every time I went. The reason I'm telling you that, that, that story is because one of the things he had me do was I was always looking at the target I wanted to hit. I knew exactly what that target looked like. I knew where, what I was aiming for, but there was no guarantee that I was gonna hit it. And so I was aiming at the target, but it took practice and repetition to hit the target. We're gonna use that same analogy as we set you up for the year. So we're gonna set 10 targets and then we're gonna set goals. And in each category, you're gonna have a target and you're gonna have 10 goals. And think of the goals as every time I came to the range and I let go of one of those, those arrows, right? The more I practice letting go of the arrow while aiming at my target, the more I increase the likelihood of hitting the target. So we're gonna set you up with the same process using that analogy for the year. So let's first well, talk. Go ahead. Well, I, I gotta say something because that analogy was so on point. You know, as a financial advisor, we, we help people plan their long-term goals. And we use an analogy of identifying a target and doing this every year. 
So the, the example that I came up with, and this is really what we did and I did in the Boy Scouts too. You know, we had a target and we took a hundred steps away from the target and we shot 10 arrows towards the target. And you know, we weren't yeah. successful, we were hitting all over the place. And then he said, okay, after you shoot the 10 arrows, then I want you to take 10 steps forward and then do it again. And you know, we may have gotten a little bit closer, but we kept taking 10 steps closer after we shot 10 arrows. And you can imagine what happened, right? As we got close to the target, we started getting more towards the bullseye. Right, absolutely. So it was a combination of practicing and going through this process. But then in time, if you continue to do that, just like with any goal, if you every year assess yourself and create your targets and then go after it, and then every year you keep doing that as you get closer and closer to your goal, you will eventually hit it or mm -hmm. definitely increase your chances of hitting it. So yeah. I just wanted to share that because that's a great analogy when it comes to uh, and, and, this process of goal setting. And for me, when I when I thought of that, it was so clear. And you know, um, I'm I love Napoleon Hill. And you know, Napoleon Hill says, you know, a man or a woman can can have a, a goal and their plan can be totally off course, right? Which was how I was when I came to the range. I was just excited. I picked up the arrow, no idea what I was doing, and I and and I tried to shoot it and it landed. But this is what he says: if you continue to practice. Every time you practice, you're going to learn something that, that moves you forward. And then you're going to practice, you're going to learn something that moves you forward. And every time that is, it's almost like whatever moves you forward, it, it, gives, it puts you closer to the target. Eventually, no matter how off course you were when you started, if you use the data, you're going to hit the target. So we're going to use that same analogy to empower us, to increase the likelihood that you hit the target. Now, this is the other thing I wanna to say to everybody. You have a target. Now, my, co my coach, when I was aiming, didn't say, Suzanne, if you don't hit the target on this day, it's all over. And, mm -hmm. and I wanna say that because that's kind of how we relate to our goals, right? I set a goal for this day. If I didn't hit it, uh, I'm a failure. The reason we set goals is so that we can, and we, we set dates for our targets is so that we can, we can adjust our course if we will, if you will, right? So you have a, a kind of a timeline and an idea of how on track, how off track you are so you can adjust. You might hit the target early, you might hit it late. The number one focus is to hit it, right? So my thing for you is to keep moving if you hit it. So, it may be that the, the year that you're building out that you may not hit all your targets, but keep the target in front of you and keep moving. So yeah. let's talk about what, how we write our targets. So I'm gonna give you your categories and, uh, and, and you know, Clifton, one thing I'll make sure is I'll, I'll make sure we have a worksheet for everyone with, okay. all, with all this information. So first target area that you, you want to, I call them foundational goals. And fa fa foundation is, is the targets we set that are foundational. So think of a building. And when you think of the foundation, the foundation is deep and it's below the surface. Although we see these beautiful high rises, right? We often don't see the foundation that is many floors below. The, the air, four areas we're gonna talk about, this, this is your foundation. All, everything else sits on this. The deeper your foundation, the higher you can rise. That's really what we're talking about. So we wanna make sure that this foundation is solid. So this is your foundation areas. One is health, right? Because we all know without, if you lose your health, you'll do anything to get it back and everything stops. So one of the things that you want to always set targets and have a clear target and goals for is your health. The next one is business, right? Business or career. So whatever, if you have a profession or you have, you own a business, you're an entrepreneur, this is the other area because this is what generates our income, right? So that's the foundation because, you know, as much as people say, I don't care about money, uh, the reality is when you don't have it, just like health, things get difficult and it's all we think about. So you wanna, you wanna look at your career business. How are you earning your income? The next one is financial. And why are we talking about financial separate? Because when you earn your money, 
a foundation for long-term vision, as Clifton will tell you, is what do you do to keep your money, leverage your money and grow your money? And then the final area is, is spiritual. Um, and for me, spiritual is where our wellness lives, our peace of mind. Those four areas are the foundation below the surface. And why are they below the surface? It's because we tend to do them and we tend to, they tend to be the, the things that we always need to have in place but they allow for everything else to happen. So let's, let's talk about, you know, your, your freedom goals, right? And this is, and I call them freedom goals because when your foundation is in place, there's a, a, it increases the likelihood that you feel free and you can do all the things that you want to do. So let's talk about freedom goals. One of them is relationship. So we're going to talk about, um, you know, areas of relationship, and who do you want to have a, be in relationship? We're going to talk about travel and recreation. Where do you want to go, right? What do you want to do that's fun? We're going to talk about personal growth and personal development. Who do you want to become? What do you want to learn? And some might be to enhance your business, and some might be just because I just want to learn that. I want to learn Spanish. <laughs> Does, will it move my business forward? I don't know. I just like the language. Um, we want to talk about education and training. What education and training do you need to keep moving forward? We're going to talk about contribution. And we're going to also talk about fun and play. And fun and play for me is just the things you like to do that you tend not to do because you're too busy. We want to make sure we have some, some, some goals in that area. So let's talk a little bit about how we structure this. So let's say our help you let's let's take a business goal because business tends to be really clear for for people so when i when i so first i'm going to set my target what am i going to aim at so it might be that you have a target of um it could be that you have a target of establishing three programs in your business and and attracting 10 clients for each program that's very specific right okay. So now you know, you know what your target is for your business. It might be that your income is you have a very specific goal. Some people might say, I, I, I want to generate, uh, I want to have an income of 50,000. I want to have an income of 60,000. I want to have an income of 100,000. So now we're looking into the financial area and we're saying, this is the money I want to have coming in. Now we're talking money. Uh -huh. and, and then in your health, you might say, my target is to... Um, be lean, lean, active, and strong. Okay. Okay. And so this is a, I want, I want everyone to listen to um, a, how I'm doing, my, doing these targets. Notice I'm not talking about what I don't want. I'm only talking about what I want. Right. So every target that I'm looking at is, so it may be that I might say my, my health goal is often I'm a lean size four um, with, uh, with, with, and I feel strong and active, right? That's, a, that's, that's kind of what I, that's kind of what I want. So that's, that's, that's my usual health target. Um, wow. And then in my business, I say what, what my business target is. And, and for me, it's usually um, how much income I want to generate in my business and, and, how many programs I'm going to have going and how many people I want in my programs. And then my financial goal, it'll be how much money I want to make. And then I'm going to talk about what I want to do with that money. So that's sort of those things. So that's, so now you have your, your targets and, and so targets are very clear and you want to have them in different areas, right? Um, in travel and recreation, I, I often say I want to have the freedom to travel and see the world. And I'm going to and I'm going to visit five continents, countries, whatever. Now I'm I'm being very bold and audacious, but that's kind of what I, I I like to do. So you set a target in every area, okay? Now what you want to do is you want to set you want to go back into each target, and now you've got your your target. And targets are kind of written like declarations. Now what you do want to do is you want to write your goals. Now, this is how it works for in the world of Suzanne is I'm going to take my target and I'm going to say, what are 10 things I need to do to hit that target? And those are the 10 goals I'm going to write down. 
So if I looked at health and wellness, Clifton, I would say, okay, well, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to exercise five times a week at 6 a.m. in the morning for 30 minutes. I'm going to drink half my body weight in water. That's two. I am going to um, eat, you know, uh, lean organic food five days a week. Um, I'm going to schedule all my medical appointments. Um, what else can I put on there? Sleep. I'm going to, I'm going to sleep seven hours a, uh, a night. Uh, I am going to, uh, stretch and, and, um, do yoga one day a week. And so I'm just going to do all these 10 things, right? And so now I'm going to do 10 things that I'm going to do now. Do you notice, do you see how I'm already building my plan? Right. Just by the things I'm writing. So now I know this is my, this is my target. And if I do these 10 things, I'm going to increase the likelihood of me hitting my target. So what you're doing is you're reverse engineering your target and you're giving yourself 10 things to do. Okay. So let's kind of back up a little bit. So first off, let's get the targets right. So the targets I have down here are health and fitness, business goals, mm -hmm. uh, financial goals, spiritual goals. And then you talked about freedom goals and relationships. So are, is that one goal, freedom and relationships or those yeah. two different goals? Okay. So, so let me clarify. So freedom, there's, there's, so there's, you have your freedom goals, which are travel and recreation. Okay. Spiritual. So freedom goals are everything other than the foundational goals. And why they're freedom goals is that when your foundation is in place, so when health is taken care of, when money is flowing, when business and career is taken care of, when your spiritual foundation is strong, we tend to feel free. We tend to feel like I can do things. And now we, we, we have the energy and the means to go, oh, let me do some travel and recreation. I now have the means to um, really focus on relationships. I now have the means to take the training and get the education I, I, I need. I now have the means to contribute and tide. And so what it is, is once I lay my foundation, I also have the ability to do these things. Now, some people will say, well, Suzanne, why am I doing foundational goals and the freedom goals at the same time? Uh -huh. Because this is the thing, your freedom goals may start small in your first year, right? Okay. But the habit of having them is what drives you. So uh -huh. I remember when I first started my business, Clifton, and, um, and, and my financial goal was I was going to put aside 10% of everything I, I, I earned. And when I started my 10% was like $10, right? <laughs> and, um, and then in my play and recreation, my play and recreation was to go down, walk down to the, the water and sit and watch the boats, boats go by. But as my foundational goals got better and my income started to go and my savings started to grow, because I was in the habit of listing all these freedom goals, they also became bigger. And what I'm actually doing is I'm training my mind for growth. I'm training my mind to focus on what's possible that's bigger each, each year as I grow. So I'm training my mind to save a percentage of my income when it comes in because I'm starting to do it even when it's small. I'm training my mind to plan to travel and do recreational things. And what I can do can get bigger and bigger as my foundation gets more solid. I'm training my mind to pour time into relationships. I'm training my mind to spend time in my spiritual practice. I'm training my mind to contribute even if it is time and $2 because that's all I have at the moment. I'm training my mind to do these things. So once my, so what I'm doing is I'm saying what, as my foundation grows, so does my freedom, if that makes sense. It does. And I'm putting up my goals right now so I can give you some examples. But before I go there, I want to finish making sure that we understand all of the targets. So there's four foundation goals, health and wellness, business goals, financial goals, and spiritual goals. Absolutely. So those are the four foundational goals. And then the other goals, the other six, 
I have as freedom goals. So the first one, first freedom goal is relationship goals. Then we've got personal growth goals. You also have education and training goals, travel and recreation, community and contribution, and then fun goals. Those were the six that I identified. Did I get those right? Absolutely. And, and, and these are the ones I work with. There's no reason why someone can't swap one out for Definitely. something that feeds their soul, right? I'm, giving, I'm giving everybody examples. Um, there, there's, there's been years where I have toy, toys and baubles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was where I was at. Um, so, so there's no right or wrong. I think the key ones are foundational. And then there's some ones I recommend that are there. Relationships are key, right? You don't want to get where you, where you want to go and not have nurtured the relationships that are important to you. So there's some that are key, but there might be some that you're like, you know what, this is really important. And you're going to make that a target and then you're going to work towards it. And I will say too, so an example of the financial goal, you talked about saving 10%. And creating the habit. I, I like to tell people that, yeah, 10% is the goal, but even if you start with saving, like if you can't do 10, do five, right? 5% and then work up to 10. If you can't do 5%, do three. Mm -hmm. do um, because if you're starting from zero, any percentage greater than zero is a step in, in a progress towards your goal. And you so know, just start the habit. Absolutely. And I, and I really want to highlight the power of the habit, right? Because you know, why habits are so key is that they become our automatic way of being, right? The, the thing we do without thinking over time. And, and so particularly when it comes to saving money or, con and, or contributing, people will say, well, when I make the money, I'll start that habit. But what happens is because they're not in the, the habit of doing that activity before they make the money, they never actually st start. Because the reality is, I can always find places that need my money, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. but, the, but the habit of paying and investing in myself first is a, is a real habit that when cultivated will grow as your income grows. So even if it is a dollar, it's the habit and the thought of paying me first and then going to $5, then going to $10, it's, it's the habit and, the, and training your mind to say, this is the first person I pay, then I do the rest. Yeah, and so I'm not gonna go through all of my goals. So some of my, my health goals is getting seven hours of sleep every day. Um, I'm, I'll, I'm not successful in doing that, but I'm definitely getting more than I used to. <laughs> um, and there are times where I, I work late, but my goal is to get seven every day and make that a consistency. I'm eating healthy, working out on a regular basis, practicing yoga daily, uh, things like that. Spiritual goals is reading the Bible, meditating, um, going, to my, going to church on a regular basis, um, waking up in a spirit of gratitude. Financial goals has around savings for cash, saving for retirement, um, tracking my finances on a regular basis and making that a habit, and some other goals of what I want to invest in, uh, career and education goals. I accomplished um, getting my master's of public administration. Very good. Uh, things like that. And then blogging. Um, also on Community Give, the Empower series. <laughs> this is part of my give to the community. Uh, family and relationship goals. I'm really writing on a regular basis and reaching out to family members regularly. Uh, spending time with my children um, and helping them accomplish certain things and building a relationship and spending time with them. I have written down fun goals, uh, traveling and seeing my, my sister, uh, spending time again with, uh, with family is fun to me. I also have a goal down here and I call it final affairs. And for me, I always talk about at some point I'm not gonna wake up. Mm -hmm. And I think about the experience that my family members are gonna have as they go through, you know, the stuff I leave behind and getting rid of my physical stuff, but then trying to find all of my records for my bank accounts, my life insurance and things of that nature. So it's really more than just having my estate planning documents together, but what am I doing to make sure that there's a summary letter to give somebody guidance who's going through my uh, stuff 
to see where to go. And I think that's very important when it comes to caring for the people that I leave behind Absolutely. and not giving them that, that kind of experience that I've had a lot of times, I'm sure other people have had when they have to take care of their loved one's final affairs, so. That's a great, that's a great goal. And, and, you know, I know for myself, I have a, I have a safety deposit box in my house where all those things sit. And, and the person who has that letter actually has, you know, you know, knows all, knows all those pieces. One of the things I want to really highlight that you, you said was, was you said on a regular basis. And um, so I'm going to, I'm going to ask, I'm going to make a request. Regular's not, regular's not a day of the week or a time of the day. You're right. That's good. That's good coaching, Suzanne. Right. And the reason that is so key, because regular is a slippery slope. So one regular, what? A slippery slope, right? It's, oh, it's yeah. It's hard. vague. It's very vague. It's, it's not it's very vague. So when, when I ask people to write, um, particularly the goals, it's notice I said, I'm going to work out at 6 a.m. five days a week for 30 minutes. That is specific. And this is, this is the reason why, because life is going to creep in. And yeah. so, and so when we have clear numbers, we, we actually can track the data. So I know for myself, I tell myself, I'm going to journal five days a week. I journal, I, I make sure I journal Monday to Monday to Friday. Uh, I, I have a time set, a, set aside to do it. So it's re, it's early in the morning. And, uh, and when I miss a day, it registers because it's not regular, it is five days a week. So I know when I'm at four. And so it's, it's when I work out five days a week, well, when I'm at three, it registers because there's a clear number attached to it. So that's one of the reasons I truly, you know, recommend that people get really specific about those those behaviors because what you're really doing is not only are you set, you you setting goals but you're also giving yourself you're creating a plan so when i say five days a week when i'm going to take that and put it into action now i have to pull out a schedule and go five days a week where does that sit in 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 my in my day when i when it's regular regular doesn't get scheduled but when you get down to this time of the day at the, for this many days a week, now you're getting into a place where you're setting yourself up for a high level of success. So that was the first thing. The other thing I wanted to highlight was, um, you know, go and visit whoever. And so, and I tell people, let's get specific. So I have spend time with my parents for a weekend every 90 days. It's that specific. And it's been like that for years. Hang out with my best friend uh, an evening every month. Uh, do this with this person this amount of times. And what it does is it brings it to our consciousness. Because when, we, when we're not specific, then it's, it's, it, tend, it never gets scheduled. I will say I'm going to travel five to five times during the year. I'm going to take five day vacations. I'm going to go five places. And when I put those five, I actually take out my calendar and I put them on my calendar in the months I want to go because I got to make sure these five work and I got to plan for it. Now, do you see how I'm using my, my, the goals and the specificity of it to actually plan for success? Does that, do you see what I'm doing? Yeah, so, so really what we've done is, when you, if you start from the very beginning, we talked about really assessing what we have accomplished, our successes, <laughs> our goals, our gratitude, and really spending some time doing that because we just don't want to just jump right into what we're talking about today, the goals that we want. So number one is just really sitting back and thinking about what have I learned? You know, what can I be grateful for? And then going through the visioning exercise to really put ourselves in a place in the future where we're really living and feeling and in crystal detail the life that we want and getting very clear on that in a relaxed setting and then using that to create an imagery via vision boarding of our vision and us living in that in that place and holding on to that and writing it down so that we can pull it up and refer to it as things get tough right Mm -hmm. then, and let's stop yes. there for a moment. Let's stop there for a moment because, and this is why this is so important. Mm -hmm. 
You and I love, you and I and everyone on the planet loves stories, right? And the reason we love stories is as soon as, we t- as soon as we're told a story, an image pops into our head. So when you, when you, when we write our vision and you write it in a story, when you go to read that, it activates the storytelling part of our brain, if you will. And, and you have a, now you have a story to match that vision board. And stories bring out emotion. Stories bring, they, it activates us. It brings, it engages our creativity. So not only do you have a vision board, now you have a story that you wrote about your life to go with that vision board. Yeah, and that's very important. And so, and so once you have that, then we talked about the targets you know, the 10 targets, foundational goals, as well as freedom goals, and getting very clear and specific on them. Don't be a wandering generality. Don't be vague. And the next step after getting very specific is to create the action plan and to really put it in your calendar and be committed to it. And there's a whole bunch of other things that we can put around um, being accountable to yourself or creating systems around you to be accountable, maybe doing this with a partner or doing this with your loved one, uh, sharing some goals. You know, you may not want to share all of your goals, but share some of the goals with other people so that, you know, those people, or you can feel more accountable to doing them. And, and so there's all these different things that you can do, which is hence why people are coaches, right? Yeah. And, and why clients come to you, Suzanne, for help to keep them on track and to help them kind of look at where they are and first be masters of themselves, and lead themselves to live the life that they that they want to live, right? Yeah, absolutely. And 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 I and you you went to accountability, and I re, I want to uh, pause there for a moment. And and what makes you know this really work is truly to have an accountability partner. And 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 whoever the accountability partner is is, is someone who kind of lives on the same page. In in other words, they've probably done the same process, and they're. They're, they've got their goals. Now, this is how accountability is set up. So the person understands your goals. And, and oftentimes when people talk about accountability, they say, this person's gonna hold me accountable. And, and we interpret that as this person's going to coerce me to do my, what I say I'm gonna do. So I wanna shift that and really set everyone up for success. So. Accountability, I say this to account for your ability to do great things. That's really what it is. And so when you ask someone to be your accountability uh, partner, their job is not to coerce you into doing. Their job is to reflect back to you who you're being in the face of your goals. And I really want everyone to get that. So you're going to, you're going to let someone know, these are my goals. And when you check with them and they say, so how did you do this week? Or did you get this done? Um, you, you're going to say yes or no. And then they're going to tell you who you're being in the in relation to what you say you're going to do. And why that I'm saying that really clearly, because once they reflect back to you, who you're being, you now get to choose to be greater or not. That's not their responsibility. Their responsibility is just to be the mirror and the sounding board for the brainstorming for you to get yourself back on track or for you to find a solution for you to be more and become more. The choice to become more is totally up to the person who, who says, this is these are my goals. It's up to each and every one of us. So you want to someone to play the mirror for you and reflect back to you This is what you said, and this is who you're being. And let's talk about the reason you're being that person, right? And that's where the accountability happens because it's the dialogue where you get to really reflect on what's going on for yourself and and why you're excelling or maybe why you're not. Wow. I'm thinking about the people in my life right now that you know, I always say that I want people around me that's going to hold me accountable to doing what I say I'm going to do. And there are some people around me that do that, but then there's this threshold to where the people who are really holding me accountable, who are really pushing me to be um, consistent with my word are not the ones that I really enjoy being around a lot. Yeah. (laughs) And so that might be a measurement 
that if there's somebody around you that you're not really feeling it, you might want to look at why you're not feeling it. You know, are you, is it because you're not really being authentic and true to your word and they're holding you accountable to that? And a lot of times we just, we circle ourselves around, we, we surround ourselves around people who make us feel good. And, and sometimes those are not the people who's going to push us to yeah. be greater. Yeah, absolutely. You, you yeah. truly want to surround yourself with people who have the courage to say, hey, this is who you're being right now, but this is who I, this is how, who I know you to be. And this is what I, this is the greatness I see in you. And, and, and because an accountability partner speaks to who you're capable of being, not who you are. That's really their, their, their role is to speak to who you're capable of being and to hold you to who you say you desire to be. That's their, that's their, that's their commitment to you. I feel, I feel a tremendous need to apologize to all those people that I've ghosted. <laughs> I just never called back and that I'm not I haven't been like you know I just haven't been kind to because in the most part you know you've been holding me accountable to doing certain things that I say I'm going to do and believe it or not there's so much that I want to do that I don't do um I just felt a need to apologize so for those of you who know who you are please accept <laughs> <the> apology <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love it. And, and, and but this is, this, is the, this is the beautiful thing about what you're demonstrating is when you truly understand accountability, you understand where the responsibility lies, right? Yeah. The responsibility lies with me to choose to be greater than I'm, I am today. The mirror is the person who loves me enough to hold it up uh -huh. and say, this is who you're being in the face of your own greatness. And that's the beauty of it. If for it to work, we all have to have the courage to play big and to rise to our own greatness. And you know, what I love about this work is no one can do that for us, but there are people who can help you create the environment for that to happen. Well, Suzanne, you know we can talk forever, right? Absolutely. <laughs> And this is just the beginning. So first off, if people want to find out how to get in touch with you to go either deeper with this or to read, get your books or whatever, how do people reach you? Absolutely. They can, they can email me at Suzanne at SuzanneHart.com. Very simple. My name. Um, my website is SuzanneHart.com. And um, I'm on most social media as Suzanne Hart. Um, mindset mastery mentor. So Suzanne Hart is is basically it. So you can find me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, those are the main main ones that people kind of track me down on. And Suzanne Hart is S U Z A N H A R T. Thank you. Yes. They make sure they spell that right. <laughs> they might reach a different Suzanne Hart, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's not Susan. <laughs> it's right, Susan. Right. Absolutely. So, I, as we wrap this up, I, I do want to give you an opportunity of what would you what would you say uh, would be a closing remark for you? I know we talked about a lot, but mm -hmm. if you were going to encapsulate what we've covered in maybe one or two points to kind of leave people with something to uh, go away with, what would you say? You know, I, I think I would say to everyone that, um, you know, we all have the ability to be great. And, and great is a, is a definition that we all get to define for ourselves. And, and, and greatness is not found in ease. Greatness is not found in simple. Greatness is not found in, um, in, in the regular, if you will. Greatness is found in those moments where we are pushing up against who we know ourselves to be. And what I love about what we're talking about today is it pushes you against who you know yourself to be. And it's when we have the courage to be responsible for what's in us and move forward in the face of, I don't know, in the face of challenge, in the face of breakdowns, that 
we find out how brilliant and unique and special we are. You know, I say that uh, please know you're brilliant. Please know you're special, but also know that the world is waiting for your unique gifts. And this process is kind of putting you on the track to start that journey. Well, Suzanne, I want to thank you for sharing your brilliant, your brilliantness with us and your greatness with us. Um, and I look forward to you know, hearing more from you and getting feedback through the comments of how people have applied this in their lives and have realized and li are living the life that, they de that they've designed and that they want to live. Uh, when you talk about being great, it reminds me of what Martin Luther King says is that we can all be great because we can all serve. Absolutely. And realize that you know, we have these gifts not to keep to ourselves, but to be a service to others and give others the freedom and the example that they can live a life that they want to design and, and to touch other people as well. Suzanne, thank you again. And I want to take the time to thank our sponsors, Comerica Bank, AE Media Group, and you, especially you for taking the time to watch our programs and to more importantly, put these ideas into action in your life and manifest the vision and the life that you imagine to live. I also want to tell you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, like us, comment, share us. Um, go to our other social media accounts and follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Go to our website. You can check out our other programs as well. Make a contribution and tell us how we have impacted your life. Until we meet again, I want you to be empowered and inspired to thrive. Thank you.